As a mediator, I spend a lot of time observing what lawyers can do at mediation that works to help their clients, but also observe things lawyers do at mediation that don't help their clients. So here's five things I've observed that lawyers can do at mediation that can help their clients and be effective. One, listen. Mediation is more about listening than it is about talking. You need to listen to the other side for a number of reasons. Firstly, they may not listen to you unless you listen to them first. Just being listened to is part of what some people need, and it's easy to meet that need by listening to them. It doesn't cost your client a cent. Listening does not mean that you're agreeing, you're merely listening. Perhaps more importantly, you're listening to the other side to try and work out what's really important to them that might be less important to your client, so you can then trade that off for what is more important to your client. Second behaviour that is very effective is to ask questions. Asking questions at mediation is one of the most effective forms of dispute resolution advocacy that a lawyer can actually do. You ask questions for a number of reasons. One, it's to make the other party feel heard, meet one of their needs to feel heard. It's trying to get information out of them as to what's important to them, which is less important to your client, and that's so you can trade off and reach some sort of agreement. However, mediation is not court. You don't cross-examine. You don't ask closed questions. Closed questions, cross-examination questions, don't give you much information. So mediation is the flip of court. You ask, op you ask open-ended questions, because the more information you get out of the other party, the better. Third effective behavior at mediation is, explain your proposals before you present them. Typically, I see lawyers say, our proposal is that you consider doing X, Y, Z, and here's our reasons for it. It never works in my experience. What happens is the other party, once they hear the proposal, stop listening, and they don't listen to your explanation. They start calculating in their head what the proposal is all about and how they might go about responding to it. So a better way to do it is to firstly give your reasons for the proposal and then give the proposal. So for example, we listen to what your client said and we listen to what you said early this morning and you said X, Y, Z and maybe quote some of the things you've said back to them. And for, because of those reasons, we thought you might consider this proposal. They'll be waiting to hear the proposal, so they're going to be listening to your explanation. Fourth effective behaviour at mediation that I've observed is don't criticise the other side's proposal. So often I hear lawyers say something like, what do you mean? You've got to be kidding. Why would my client agree to pay your client $10 million? It's ridiculous. Once you criticise the other side's proposal, I know what's going to happen. The other side is going to feel obliged to defend it. I'll give you 10 good reasons why they say your client should pay to their client $10 million. And what they do is reinforce that position. They paint themselves into a corner. And it's then very hard for them to shift away from it. So rather than attacking their position, which actually consolidates the commitment to it, a better way to do it is two, two options. One is, why can't that proposal? It's just another proposal. Okay, well that's one idea I suppose. I'm sure we can come up with many more options and many more ideas during the course of the mediation. Another way you deal with a demand from the other side is you ask questions about it. Did you want to explain what data you relied upon to make that proposal? Did you want to explain why your client finds that a, a proposal attractive to them? Did you want to explain why you think my client might agree to it? By asking those types of questions, you might get more information. Secondly, you might find the other st side starts modifying that proposal without you even needing to make any counter offers. Fifth effective behavior at mediation, and I know this, this one sounds simple, but it makes a huge difference from what I observe on my mediator's side of the mediation table. Refer to the other party by their name, not as the applicant, not as the defendant, not as the respondent, not as the husband, not as the father, the wife, whatever. If you want someone to be defensive, to be reactive, to not listen, no better way to do it than by dehumanising them down to just whatever their technical role in the proceedings might actually be. If on the other hand, you want the other party to listen, to be reflective, and to be thoughtful, then call them by their real name. Get permission to call them by their first name, but use their real name, not their technical role. Also encourage your client to call the other party by their name, not as their ex, and not as their role in the actual proceedings. 
If you want some more details about these five effective behaviours of lawyers at mediation, um, and, or you want another five effective behaviours, uh, look at my blog where I talk about 10 effective behaviours lawyers can do that work at mediation.